Hoş geldiniz çocuklarım ve hepsini yeni öğrenciler. Welcome my children and all new students. My name is Mr. Katap and this is my library. I'm glad you joined us today because we are continuing to read a brand new book entitled Rigel and Piper Shout to Africa by R.J. McCutcheon. It's a long one, so like and subscribe right now so you won't miss any of the exciting chapters. Remember, last week, in Chapter 6, we learned that Dr. Piper is engaged but chose to volunteer in Africa for an entire year before her wedding. When writing to her fiancé, Piper mentions something else intriguing. Elephant, poop, paper. Sounds like fiction, but you know what? I have some right here. Elephant poop paper is real. You can search it up right now on YouTube. They clean the poop and collect all the grass, hay, and sugarcane fibers that the elephant didn't digest. Then they boil it and mulch it up before spreading it out on large screens to dry. When all the water has evaporated, you have paper. The company even claims that they are number one at dealing with number two. You can still see large pieces of grass woven into it. And it doesn't stink one bit. It just smells like paper. How great is this? Now, more importantly to our plot, Rigel and Piper's dad sent them a plane load of anthrax test kits so they can sample everything to find out where the killer endospores are hiding. Usually, these test kits are reserved for the military, but their dad knew the right people to ask and wasn't afraid to call them up. He wants to protect his children, but we don't know yet what exactly he's protecting his children from. To find out, we just have to keep reading. Hazirmian, are you ready? Chapter 7 is called Observation and Experimentation. Help! Yeah, keep walking, Black Knight. I got her before you did. Go back and hide in your tent. Oh, Calidris, look. The White Knight is passing so close. Oh, oh, I think he's looking at me. Yeah, I, I think he is too. Come on, let's stand back a bit. That annoying Black Knight interrupted the next match. The premier White Knight versus the Green Champion. I wonder if the White Knight will need a fresh horse. So what is going on here? We're almost to the end of the tournament. Only one day left to decide the championship. The Knights have been at it for five days now. It's been super exciting. Once in a while, someone even dies. Oh, how awful. It's all part of the game. They know what they're getting into. To be the best takes sacrifice. Hey, after this next bout, would you like to come over to my castle? I'm sure you would love it. Um, okay. Great, here they go. Go, White Dragon, go! And... And yes, another win. No one can stop him. The White Knight is going to win the entire thing. I'm just sure of it. Wake up, Pipey. Nap time is over. Time for some science. Already? Okay. Let me wash my face first. It was a long night with six baby zebra, the baby cheetah, and I keep having weird dreams. Maybe I'm afraid that chanting witch doctor will come back. What witch doctor? It was two nights ago. Dennis got him to go away with a donut. Ask him about it. Okay. Well, your nasty little anthrax pregnancy test take two hours to show anything, so I took a nap too. And congratulations! Some of them are turning up positive. You're expecting anthrax. Hooray! Is Dr. Abel around? We should go through these together. He's outside cursing that he can't find a gas can and needs to decontaminate. Decontaminate? What? We need to go through these kits together. He's seen enough. He was in here looking at all of them when I came in. He kept shaking his head, muttering, This can't be. This can't be right. Why would the test be wrong? For many people, the scientific method has nothing to do with observation and experimentation. Where are Dr. Zabel's test kits? None of them are here. Oh, he took them all outside and is now apparently looking for some gasoline to burn them, even though he knows the fire won't kill all the endospores. 
What? If he's destroying the data, why didn't he take them all? Because I didn't let him take yours or Gemma's. Rigel said with a knowing grin. But you were okay with him taking his own? It was a small victory, and he seemed to need one at the moment. Besides, when he was in the storeroom looking for a potato sack to burn them in, I took pictures of his data sets. <laughs> if you'd like, I'm ready to go through them. Gemma, grab your phone and take pictures of both your data sets and mine. I don't know what's going on with Dr. Abel, but if he comes back in a huff, we're just going to give him all the test kits. It's not worth fighting over. I'll be back in a minute. That was pretty quick thinking to take pictures of Dr. Abel's data. Thanks. It's just a little frustrating seeing people mess with the integrity of the science. I had a hunch he was up to no good, so I did something about it. A bush pilot who cares about the integrity of medical data? Call me a man of many talents. How about you? What are your talents, Miss Gemma? Why did you become a vet tech? Oh, I love my summers as a child here at Baobab Station. Swimming up at the falls, but mostly just being around the animals. Malcolm is my uncle, and Granny lives nearby. We got to visit a lot. Okay. Sounds pretty idyllic. Think you could do it for the rest of your life? Well, my dream job is to work with mountain gorillas on the other side of Lake Victoria. I'm supposed to go help out over there later this year. That's exciting. Why gorillas? Well, I had this one incredible experience as a child, but it was at the zoo. And in Africa, animal encounters at the zoo just don't count, so I kind of don't talk about it. But I was about ten, and my brother and sisters were being really bratty and they were playing tug of war with me when all of a sudden this gorilla came charging towards us beating its chest and baring its teeth it scared my brother and sister badly enough to just leave me alone and then i sat down next to the glass wall of its habitat and the gorilla and i just had this moment she plopped down next to me and put her hand up against the window with this concern in her eyes that i've never been able to forget it wasn't animal. It was human emotion. Wow. And it changed your life. Yes, it did. Okay, I'm all done taking pictures. Oh, good. Let's start going over them. Share the pictures with me first, just in case Dr. Abel gets sneaky. I created a file folder in the data cloud. Here, just type in your number and we can all access them, but only I can delete them. Okay, another good precaution. Smooth move. Now you have her number. Keep it professional, Piper wrote on her tablet and held up for her brother to silently read. What? There you go, Gemma said as she handed Rigel's phone back to him. Dr. Piper, where would you like to start? She continued, unaware of the sibling silent exchange. Let's start with the earwax samples. My earwax is negative for anthrax spores. Gemma? I'm clean. Why did we test ourselves again? For a baseline of data. You can tell me everywhere you have been. A zebra can't. Rigel, how does Dr. Abel's read? Dr. Remy's also clean. Dr. Remy, that's funny. Remy is the name of our grandparents' dog. Woof! Now it's really funny. And it fits on so many different levels. Okay, on to skin scrapings. I'm negative. Negative. Remy's negative. And for our last test spot, how are everyone's fingernails? I'm clean. Clean! Dr. Abel is positive. What? Here, look. That is just slightly positive, isn't it? Barely. But barely positive for anthrax is still positive. It could be a contaminated sample. It could be the reason he got so upset and is currently trying to destroy the test kits. I'll talk to him about it later. Ask Dennis for help. He's just good at working with Dr. Abel. Thanks, I'll do that. Now, though, on to the zebra tests. We have ten infected adults and six not-infected infants. How do the earwax tests read? All negative. Adults and babies. Okay. And the skin scrapings? Two positive adults. All negative with the babies. Hmm. Why would only two zebra have anthrax spores on their coats? Not only two. At least two. You didn't completely brush each zebra when collecting samples. You're right. Wild zebras don't appreciate the benefits of a good curry comb. I only got along their backbones. Would you like me to try again, but get more of the zebra coats next time? Not yet. 
What do the hoof readings say? All positive, both adults and babies. So anthrax spores are sticking to their hooves? Looks like it. And maybe their coats. So they fell off in the fresh grass we laid down in the horse trailer? Which made poor old Phoenix sick too. Except that the foals didn't migrate south. No. No, the foals didn't migrate south. They were born here. There was no way that they walked through the same sticky patch of anthrax that killed the other herds of zebra. So either this is a different source of anthrax, like a local field they all happen to be grazing from and rolling around in right before we caught them that is also contaminated? Maybe, but the adults were already sick for at least a day, maybe two, which is how we spotted them from the air. But if this anthrax is the same as what killed the previous zebra, then we just found the world's first case of contagious anthrax. It stuck to the adult's feet, then fell off and stuck to the children's hooves. Then it fell off the foal's hooves and infected Malcolm's horse. Did we test the horse's hooves at all? No, we didn't. But if Dr. Abel is infected too, then the anthrax spores are still falling off and he got some under his fingernails. Oh, I hope not. We need to do more testing to know for sure. I think Dr. Remy is outside trying to destroy your first bit of proof. I'm calling Dad. If we have contagious anthrax on our hands, his people need to know, even if it is still just a possibility. Rigel said with alarm as he walked out of the station, phone already in his hand. You have a very impressive brother, Gem amused, half to Piper, watching Rigel leave. Oh... He got our mother's blonde curls, but he is very much like our father, Piper responded quietly before whispering to herself. Everyone else is an idiot because they, somehow, are always right. Elephant poop paper. Sounds like fiction, but you know what? I have some right here! That didn't work. <laughs> this daddy. You're not going to do daddy. Where's the hippo? Right here, and are they on the wido? Who's that? The wido. Is that Rigel? Yeah. Yeah. What's in the house with Rigel? Um, Ardell, and a hippo, and two hippos. Hippos. Flying. But. Pain. Pain. Castle. Chicken. Out of there. People. Hold on! Say bye.